For the third year in a row, dead fish are washing up on the shores of Sparks Marina. The Nevada Department of Wildlife says the lake is not contaminated. Plenty of water tests have been done on the, on the water in the Sparks Marina. It's totally clean. Fish are washing up dead on the shores of the Sparks Marina, particularly trout. A morning stroll down the public beaches in Fairhope revealed an unusual phenomenon. Dead or dying fish were washing up along the shores. Fairhope resident and eco-tour operator Jimbo Metter has seen fish kills before due to red tide and low oxygen levels in the water. But to him, this one seems unusual. Doesn't look like an algae bloom, but I'm seeing all these dead menhaden here and there's dead fish all over the beach and, uh, and he's dying. Now why he's dying, we don't know. Biologists with the Dauphin Island Sea Lab have collected samples and are trying to determine what the cause is. Even though officials aren't sure what's causing the fish kill as of yet, folks who live along the bay, like Jimbo Meta, are just glad to know it's being looked into. It's a, it's a mystery right now. I mean, fish are dying. It's, uh, you want to know why. We don't know what it, what it is, so we're not sure what can be done. If it's a harmful algal bloom, you know, it'd be interesting to know if there's any um, human health issues associated with it. Um, you know, why is it, why is it killing the fish? If, is it a neurotoxin or is it another species has a different kind of um, activity that affects fish? Who knows? Uh, you, I see a lot of blooms around here, but this is the, you know, the first time I've seen fish behaving this way. First time ever, you mean? Yeah, swimming in circles, yeah. We're going to take you back to Coburn now, where the mystery surrounding mass bird and sea life deaths in the area has prompted public anger and growing concern. Something real is happening, and I think the government needs to get to the bottom of it. They need to put in place the best scientific examination to find out exactly what's occurring here. As you put it, the, the, the best of science, uh, all they seem to be coming back with at the moment is that this might be a naturally occurring phenomenon down there. Do you buy that? Well, I'm not a scientist, but I don't recall this ever happening before. I've lived here in Rockingham for 25 years. Uh, I've swum in the Sound for 25 years. I've never heard of something like this happening before. We've been congressionally mandated to verify the exit process and this is a test to determine in this pedestrian environment can we do that with this technology. Digital technology offers the promise of intimacy, amusement and even a longer life. With the ability to do billions of calculations in our pockets, it seems we've discovered a new dimension in which everything in our lives can be improved and tracked and then turned into money. But is convenience, profit and surveillance the only use for these new powers? We're a multimodal biometrics identification company. We've got the world's only patent on a handheld multimodal, which means fingerprint, iris and facial uh, device on smartphones or on tablets. It's installed in State Department of Corrections, um, Sheriff's Offices and local police in 47 states. It's big.
me, this is a form of governance by data. It might be a perfectly normal individual whose facial expression, for example, might indicate that you have some dangerous or suspicious thoughts. Within five years or so, we're looking at a future where police forces would be able to identify who you are and where you are in the city and link it to a social networking page and to all of your friends. Imagine technology that truly understands you and can adjust the ambience to your mood at that moment. Technology that lets you live your life without having to think about it and just add something extra to the little things in life. Or the big ones. Enjoy the freedom. Revolutionary smart living. Biometric tattoos are raising the bar in wearable technology, and here to fill us in on the who, what, where, when, and why is our very own Lionel of Lionel Media. Hello, sir. Can you tell us what direction is this going with the biometrics and the tattoos? These things aren't easy to take off. What's your opinion on them? Eventually, what's happening is that we are being led bit by bit through, to use the Skinnerian term, from shaping through the successive approximation to ultimately having within our bodies an RFID chip that will be implanted, that people will stand in line and in queues for to have, so that ultimately we will have in our bodies, because what we're doing right now, Lindsay, is we're slowly moving towards that. We went from the desktop to the laptop to the phone to the watch and now we're having little tats, tattoos, little biometrics, all of them leading to the ultimate goal. And that is an RFID, a radio frequency identification or similar chip to be placed subcutaneously. And that chip, Lindsay, will have everything about you there is. Your bank account, your GPS location, and you will do it. You will get one because after all, it will also have the siren call of medical information. And then one day, God forbid, not you, one day when people are found guilty of, let's say, crimes, they're not going to be put into a, the who's gow, in the pokey, no. Their chip is going to be turned off and poof, they don't exist anymore. That's where all of this is going. Everything that's happening right now, think about this. It's not going to be because of the government forcing this on you. People will say, please, put this on. Put this tat on, this UPC. I want to be a part of it. Thanks to technology, we can go see our favorite deceased performers live. Starting in 2016, Dean Martin will launch a national tour starting in Las Vegas. And he's not the only one who's coming back from the grave. Hologram USA, the company behind Tupac's and Martin's performances, is also developing holograms. The realm of possibilities with holograms is huge, and the subject doesn't have to be deceased or a figment of our imagination either. Jimmy Kimmel has been using hologram technology to simultaneously host his show from Los Angeles and Nashville during the Country Music Awards in the past two years. Beam me up, Andy. Here we go. I think I have to spin around for this to really, really work. Wow. And in 2011, Mariah Carey performed a special Christmas concert in five different European locations at once. So maybe this means someone will create an NSYNC hologram and send it out on a national tour. I'm holding out hope on that one. And then there's this story tonight. A new billboard along a Colorado interstate is raising eyebrows. Take a look at this. As you can see, the sign says, go ahead, skip church, just be good for goodness sake. A group called American Atheists put up the billboard. They insist the sign is not an attack on Christmas. Heather Roten cried tears of joy when she first saw this memorial bench dedicated to her 16-month-old son, Mason. It sat near the playground at Elkin Municipal Park where Roten used to bring her sons every week. They had a blast down here. But the bench that was just put in on Saturday, three months after Mason's death, was removed on Monday. One day we come down here with this beautiful bench, tears of joy, and now it's being taken away. 
Her husband's former classmates from Elkin High School got the bench made and put it in, but were told by town officials that it couldn't stay because of this Bible verse from Psalms 127. All right, Brian, a Madison-based organization is filing a complaint against a Northern Illinois high school football team over a photo of a coach leading his team in prayer. Now, the latest event happened in Naperville, Illinois. A photographer actually captured this photo of the Naperville Central High School football players before a November game. They fire a high school coach because yes. he, he, he prays with his team uh, before and after the games. Mm -hmm. uh, yet the NFL and everybody else th yeah. this weekend says, let's, let's, let's moment, of moment of silence, let's pray you know, for the exactly. victims. And you're talking about if you're not going to do, if you're not going to allow all prayer, then how could you allow some prayer? Exactly. I just think it speaks to the hypocrisy that, um, that we're seeing. Uh, it, it, it's crazy to me that you know, th this man who's a football coach has a right to come in after the game to pray and he's suspended. But yet when tragedies happen, when these horrible things happen, when someone is ill, when it's something that's out of our control, we always feel that we have the need to go to a higher power and pray. All I'm saying is that, look, we have to choose. Is God the God who we look to for comfort during tragedies? Is he the God who can control all those things? Or is he the God that we don't even trust with our daily lives and allow someone to pray? But I understand you've been spending the day with Tyson Fury, if I can it that way. I have. I went to his home near Morecambe. Uh, Fury has also lost his IBF belt today, I should add, because he's failed to rearrange a fight with the uh, mandatory challengers. Have you got anything you can tell us about? about yes, I have. I've got lots to tell you. Go on, just give us Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and you will be saved. Is that your reaction to what people who want you off the spotty shortly? Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and you'll be saved. And what about you being stripped of your belt? Yeah, I mean, I that, that, that's, uh, you must be very unhappy with that. What's your reaction to that? Jesus loves me, and he loves you too, and he loves you too. He loves these people in here, and he loves everybody in the world. Uh, any final any final message to those people who who have criticised you in recent? There's been a lot of criticism from people in signing petitions to the uh, Scottish national people, to all sorts of yes, people. Yes, yes. Just, give us, just give us your take on it. Do you stand by your comment? Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, and you will be saved. Okay, Tyson. The only way is through Jesus into heaven. That's all I can say.